Hey, all right, welcome. Mike Simmons of WPHowTos.com here, bringing you another non-fluffy video. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can encourage your website visitors to stay on your site longer and read more of your website content by making your WordPress website load faster. In fact, the results I have seen have been anywhere from 200 to 400% faster load times after doing this. And to implement this process, we are going to utilize using two very good but free WordPress plugins in conjunction with using a free option of an online service, which we'll sign up for. But before we take a look at the process, which of course I'll walk you through step by step, let's take a look at some before and after results. Here is a website which I recently redesigned for a client of mine. And yes, I do build websites and do local marketing for small businesses also. We upgraded his site to a responsive theme because back in 2011, responsive themes just weren't around back then. Let's take a look and see how fast his site loads. As you can see, this is a pretty darn fast loading WordPress website. Having a fast loading site doesn't directly affect your rankings on Google and the search engines, but indirectly it does because Google does take note of how long people stay on your site. And if your site is a fast loading site, people just have a tendency to look at more of your what you have to offer and the services you offer and that sort of thing, and Google will definitely notice. All right, so we saw how fast that site loads with our own eyes. Here is some data to back up what we saw. We're at a website of an online service called Pingdom, and Pingdom has a free uh, website speed test which you can use, and here is the URL tools.pingdom.com forward slash FPT. And of course, you just put in your URL, and then under settings, click on that, and then choose where you want to test from, and click on test now. And here's a test I just ran on that site that we took a look at, and the load time came back at 777 milliseconds faster than 93% of all tested websites. So as we saw, this is a fast loading WordPress website. And here's another test I ran on the same site from San Jose, California, and the results came back even faster. Here's a screenshot I did of the same site before I implemented the process, which I will be going over in this video. The load time was 2.03 seconds which is not bad, but of course it's much slower than we're getting right now. So as you can see for yourself, you can definitely get some good results. So let's get started making your WordPress website fast. All right, first we're going to go over what I call basic stuff, and then we'll get into the main process. Now, some of the things that can affect your site's load speed are definitely your hosting and or your WordPress theme. Now your theme, uh, I like to use what are called simple framework themes that don't have a lot of stuff on them, a lot of bloated code, and do the functions that I want to add to my site, add the functions with plugins. Now some of the themes, for instance, like you find at uh, Theme Forest, even though they look cool, they, they have so much code on them, they're definitely going to slow your site down. I don't recommend a lot of those themes. They have a few nice ones, I guess, but uh, generally I like to use like Genesis or uh, some other framework themes like Beaver Builder, myself, but you know, it's all up to you, of course. Now, your hosting is definitely going to affect your site's load speed. Of course, most of us probably aren't going to get to, you know, upgrade to costlier hosting just to speed up our site unless we have a lot of web traffic on our site. And the next thing we're going to talk about are plugins, which can definitely slow your site down if you have the, too many or the wrong kind of plugins activated on your site. On your dashboard, you can go to your plugins page. It'll show you how many active plugins you have. I recommend between 10 to 15 at most of activated plugins on your site. Now, there's a lot of cool plugins, but don't go too overboard because it will start slowing your site down. And of course, you can do a test at Pingdom by deactivating certain plugins and then doing a, t a couple tests and then come back and activating them and doing a test and kind of get a ballpark of how much they're affecting your site load speed. So go through your list and then deactivate and delete the plugins that you don't need. Now an important thing to keep in mind, if you have any caching plugin already activated on your site, for instance, WP Supercache is one that comes with HostGator's hosting, I believe, make sure that you deactivate this plugin, but do not delete it. So deactivate WP Supercache or uh, some other uh, caching type plugin, but do not delete them because many times you have to 
delete some code before you can delete the plugin off your site or you'll get an error. So deactivate but do not delete WP Supercache. Important thing to take note of. Next thing you can check on that might affect your site load speed if you have a bunch of posts and pages in your trash. For instance, if you go to your post page, it'll show you your trash. If you have some in your trash, go ahead and click on that link and then go in there and delete those off your site. If you have a bunch of them, they can affect your site load speed. Just one's probably not going to do anything. You can also go to your setting, settings reading under settings and where it sh says show up how many blog posts it shows on your blog page. You can limit that to 5 or 10 if you have big blog posts that might slow your site down if you're running a blog. So look at, take a look at that. But that may or may not affect your site load speed. But this process will definitely help speed up your site unless your site is already very, very fast. The first thing we are going to do in this main process are install and activate two plugins. The first one is called EWWW3W's Image Optimizer. Go to Plugins, Add New, do a search for, install, and activate this plugin. Then do the same for W3 Total Cache. Install and activate that plugin. Then, once you have those plugins installed and activated, we're going to go back to our dashboard and then under Settings, you'll look and find EWWW Image Optimizer. Go ahead and click on that tab. And then you'll see some links which will say Plugin Homepage Installation Instructions. And below that, it'll show you a link which says Bulk Optimize Tool. Go ahead and click on that link. All right, so Optimize Media Library. Below that, you're going to see a little white button, which you can hover over and click on Start Optimizing. Depending on how many images you have on your site, it might take a while, but this is the only time you're going to have to do that. After this, it's all automatic when an image is uploaded to your site. Once that is done, and it might take a while, come back under Optimize Everything Else and look for Scan and Optimize button and go ahead and click on that and let that run also. And something else to keep in mind about images is just make sure that you resize really large images before you upload them to your site. If you need an image that's, say, 800 pixels wide, don't upload an image that's 5,000 pixels wide and then use it on your site. Resize it first. You can go to a site like Pixlr, P -I -X -L -R com and resize it there, and then upload it to your WordPress site. The next part of our process is really the main part of our process. We're going to do the settings for the W3 Total Cache plugin, plus uh, set up our Cloudflare CDN account also. So you're going to go back to your dashboard, and then at your dashboard, you'll see a tab that says Performance. Go ahead and click on that. And then under Performance, click on General Settings. Now we're going to go through the General Settings. Page cache is probably the most important setting for this plugin. And what a page cache is, is that it caches a version, stores a version of your page, so that instead of having to go through the process when somebody clicks on your page link, and where it goes through the process of sending a bunch of requests to all the PHP and MySQL databases and all that sort of thing, it'll send back the paged cached version, which will decrease the response time of your site, just like it says right here. So we want to have the page cache enabled, put a check in that box, and then under page cache method, shared server, which is what most people will have, disk enhanced. Click on save all settings. After you've done that, we're just going to ignore all the rest of this, scroll down, ignore minify, ignore database cache, ignore object cache, and make sure you put a check in the browser cache box right there. Enable browser cache and click Save All Settings. And that'll take care of it for this general settings. Now under Performance, click on Page Cache. And this we might call the Advanced Settings of the Page Cache. Under General, have a check in the box which says Cache Post Pages, Page, excuse me. Put a check in Cache Feeds, Site Categories, etc. Scroll down a little bit. Put a check in the cache request only for your domain site address. Then put a check in the don't cache pages for logged in users. 
unless you don't want to, of course. And then click on Save All Settings. And then you want to scroll down a little bit below that. And you'll see Cache Preload. And you're going to need your XML sitemaps URL for this. Now, if you have a plugin such as Google XML sitemaps on your site, you can find it by hovering over the, the tab on your dashboard. Or if you have, for instance, the SEO plugin by Yoast, WordPress SEO by Yoast, under your dashboard you'll see SEO and then look for the XML sitemaps tab and click on that. And you see something that says you can find your XML sitemap here and click on that. That'll open up your XML sitemap. Go ahead and highlight your URL of your sitemap and right click and copy. Then we'll come back to our cache preload settings, paste that URL in there, then make sure you put a check in this box which says automatically prime the page cache. These two settings, update interval and pages per interval, should be already filled in for you. Put a check in the box which says preload the post cache, and then click on save all settings. The next thing we're going to look for under performance is extensions. So scroll down a little bit there where you'll see extensions. Click on that link. The first extension is the one that really does the work for us called Cloudflare. And Cloudflare is a CDN, a content delivery network, which basically uh, speeds up your site. Now you can do a search online, what is a CDN, and it'll give you a description of what a content delivery network is. But it speeds up your site and protects it, so it really is very effective. All right, first we have to sign up for our free Cloudflare account. So right in the uh, description for the Cloudflare extension, there'll be a link which says sign up now for free. Go ahead and click on that. And then you'll have to put in an email and a password a couple times and put a check in the box and click on create an account. And then you'll be in your account and then you have to add your domain name or domain names. You can put in more than one domain to sign up for Cloudflare. You just have to separate them with a comma. And you'll just click on this Scan DNS Records green button. The Cloudflare system is scanning your setup. And that's going to let you listen to and watch a video for about a minute while this continues to scan your uh, DNS records. All right, so that is done scanning. So we'll just click on this green Continue button. And this is your DNS records that Cloudflare uh, scanned for you. And it should be all correct, but we'll just make sure. Anything that has a gray cloud means it's not running through Cloudflare. And you don't want any of this stuff to run through Cloudflare, even though it has that little orange button right there. Your type A domain name, you want that to be on Cloudflare. So you want that orange cloud to show up. See, so if you click it, it'll change to a gray cloud. Click it again, it'll be orange. Everything else you want to be gray cloud except for the CNAME www, which is just an alias of your domain name. So you want that to be orange too. So it looks like everything is great. So we'll click on continue. And we want the free account. Click on continue. All right, the next step is you have to change your name servers to point to your Cloudflare name servers for your domain. And so if you don't know how to do that, you can always just do a search online. I did a search for changing name servers at GoDaddy, and it walks you through the process. Or if you bought your uh, domain with your HostGator hosting, you can just go to register.hostgator.com and log in, and then click on Manage Domains. You have to log in with your billing account password and username, by the way, at HostGator. Then click on Manage Domains, and then click on your domain name. And you can always just call your uh, whoever you bought your domain with, and they can probably tell you how to do it. Let's go back to our Cloudflare account page, and we'll just click on Continue. All right, so then it's going to ask you to recheck your name servers. Now, it can take up to 24 hours for these to propagate, but usually it doesn't take anywhere near that long. But anyway, we'll just uh, move on to our next step, which is over on the top right under your email address, Click on the down arrow and then click on My Settings. And you can put in your personal info if you like. We just need to scroll down the page right now and click on this blue View API Key. And then go ahead and double click and right click and copy your API key. Then we'll go back to our Cloudflare page. And then now you're going to click on Activate your Cloudflare extension. So 
So I'll go ahead and click that link right there. And now you're going to have some Cloudflare settings under your general settings under performance. Of course, you want to put a check in the box to enable it. Put your email address you signed up for Cloudflare with. Paste in that API key. Put your domain name. Security level, I usually check medium or high. And it even says I'm under attack. My goodness. Rocket loader, I put automatic. Minification, I select CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. Development mode, I leave off, but you can log into your site, and then if you're going to work on your site, uh, come to your performance tab, and then Cloudflare settings, and then toggle it on, and click on Save All Settings, and then when you're done working on your site, come back and toggle it off and click Save All Settings, but right now you just need to click on Save All Settings. All right, and that is all there is to this process. It might take a little while for your name servers to propagate, but it usually doesn't take too long, and you should be seeing some great results if you do a test at uh, pingdom.com for a speed test there. And if you do have any questions or comments, leave them below the video in the video description, or you can go to my website and send me an email. And as always, keep on keeping on and keep on smiling.